Hello, my name is Hemingway Jones and I make videos for curious people. Today, we're going to speak about one of the rarest typewriters in the world. Now, what makes this machine so rare? Well, it's certainly not the model number. You might recognize this as a Royal P. The P stood for portable. This typewriter was manufactured from around 1929 to 1933 or so. So it's not the model. The model is very popular, very successful. And it's not the color. This is an uncommon color, but it's not particularly rare. You do see them in this sort of brown highlighted color. I also have this very model in black and red. And they come in a bunch of different colors and textures from green to textured almost like a reptile color. All kinds of colors, very interesting for the time. No, what makes this typewriter one of the rarest that you can find is its typeface. This has a very rare and interesting typeface. So let's talk about that. So I'm known more for speaking about journaling, inks, and fountain pens, but I think that typewriters really fit in well into that world. Typewriters are a fantastic way to express yourself. It's a way to get a note on paper and sort of print it out right in front of you. And you can share it or you can type an entire letter and then sign it boldly with one of your fountain pens or maybe embellish the letter with a little bit of art using some spectacular inks. Many people use typewriters creatively. I'm a bit like this myself when I feel that I'm not quite expressing myself very eloquently. I'll use a typewriter because it slows me down and it sort of opens me up and gets my poetic side really going. I really love to write poetry on a typewriter because you're really thinking about each word while you craft them and craft them really means typing them out so it's very satisfying okay so this particular model is really interesting because it has glass keys so these keys have the metal ring around them a bit of glass and beneath it is a paper or some kind of card stock that has a letter on it now that makes an incredible surface that fits your fingertips perfectly and makes the typing experience very exquisite for its day, this machine is quite light, very portable, but ironically, the cases for these rarely survive. They had really bad clasps and the board that they were made out of tends to react poorly to any kind of moisture. Now the main show in regards to this typewriter is its magnificent typeface. If you're into calligraphy or handwriting, then typefaces are also very interesting. We know there's many ways to express a letter and this one does it in a very unique and almost dated fashion. So, this typeface was called Vogue by the company and you could get it on a machine from the late 20s up until the mid 1950s and you could custom order it on any royal machine at the time at the time if you ordered a typewriter for yourself you could choose what kind of typeface you wanted from cursive to the standard typefaces like Pika and Elite that we all know and love now this particular one was very rare because it's so particular and what it is is a sans serif art deco typeface that's highly stylized it looks like the kind of lettering you might see on a f scott fitzgerald book cover or perhaps on the ornamentation of the Empire State Building. It's very much rooted in that 1930s Art Deco movement. It's made for correspondence, it's made for letters, it's made for invitations, and that's why not many people would have ordered it because a machine like this would not have been your primary machine. But boy, does it make an impact. It is one of the most beautiful and interesting typefaces that I know on any machine. So sans serif letters mean that they don't have the little feet at the bottom of certain letters like you're used to on some typewriters, certainly for standard typeface. So these sort of 
float there. They're very fine. They're also quite rounded. The E in particular has this slanting bottom line on the closing of the loop, which looks really highly stylized and very interesting. It also does not have a number one because you would substitute a lowercase l for a number one. And similarly, it doesn't have an exclamation point either for two reasons. One is that exclamation points were used very sparingly in those days. There wasn't a lot of yelling in print and because you could make it with the combination of an apostrophe, a backspace, and then a full stop, making that exclamation point for you. So I love owning this machine. Some folks have received letters from me crafted on it. I write poems on it. I use it as often as possible. It's an absolute delight to type on. It has that fantastic typing noise and it's just a pure joy. So if you want to find a Vogue typewriter for yourself, how would you go about doing it? Well, it's both harder and easier than you would imagine. It's more difficult in the sense that if you absolutely go looking for a Vogue machine, you're probably going to find one listed by someone who knows what it is. And they usually ask some sort of exorbitant amount for it, like $700 or something ridiculous like that. However, there are a lot of Royal Peas out there and there's maybe 5% of them that have the Vogue typeface. So if you hunt for a Royal P and you just focus in on the typeface, then you can tell it's a Vogue machine and you should be able to find one for a hundred, two hundred hours, which is about what these go for. I think that's the best way to find one for yourself. So if you're considering getting a typewriter for yourself, there are few models that I recommend as much as this one. It is just an absolute joy to own, to use. It requires very little maintenance. It's easy to get the ribbons on eBay or on Amazon. They're freely available anywhere and everywhere. So it's just a magnificent machine that just connects you with this long history of typing out a letter or doing something creative and special for someone. It's just an absolutely beautiful way to really connect with yourself, to get into the rhythm of the clicking and clacking and the bell at the end of the line and the beautiful mechanical sound of the carriage exchange. It's just very sensual. It's fully immersive. It's very tactile. It's very exciting and it's really intense while you write and seeing your words being tapped out like a tattoo gun into the paper. It's absolutely brilliant, thrilling experience. And if you love fountain pens, you'll probably like typewriters too. And to be honest, you don't need a rare machine. You could buy a really lovely Royal Quiet Deluxe from the late 1940s for maybe $30, $35. It will give you just as much joy and expression as this would. So it's absolutely brilliant. It's a lot of fun and it really ties in with fountain pen culture. So what do you think of the Royal P with the Vogue typeface? Do you love it as much as I do? Do you like the Vogue typeface? I just can't get enough of it. Let me know in the comments. So if you've watched to this point, consider subscribing. I think you enjoy what we do here and we toss around a lot of different ideas. The whole point is to keep you interested and to keep you inspired in writing. So I release new videos each week and I have a live show every Tuesday night at eight. There's also membership available for the channel. If you're curious what's going on behind the scenes, if you want to take part in our pen pal group, then please do come on back, join the channel. I would love to have you. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching today. Take care of yourself and I'll see you further down the road. Take care.